All right, so I'm going to go into variables in Grafana and how you use them with InfluxDB. So I have two variables already set up at the top, and then I have two uh, dashboard or two, yeah, two dashboard panels down here for those two. So let me go ahead first and show you what these look like. So you go to your dashboard settings and you go to variables. Yes, they are global variables that you can adjust from the top and it will automatically adjust all of the queries that are using that global variable. So for aircraft type, what I did was I used query and I will say that query it tends to be the one that people tend to use quite a bit. I do have also just a text box one, but query is probably the most common. And the easiest thing to do for this would be to grab a query that you already have within your panel or dashboard and pop it in here because basically what it's going to ask for is a SQL query when you create your or when you choose the data source to be in flux. So it's not going to build it for you. There's no drop downs or labels or anything like that. It really is a query. So I grabbed this query already from um, a, a dashboard from a panel that I already had created, which basically tells me a list of distinct aircraft types from our flight. One thing to also note about this is that, for example, my query doesn't have any time on it, so it will be querying all of the aircraft types. You can also still use a regex if you would like. So for example, I could use a regex, which would go ahead and block out, let's see here, I can run this, and there we go. I would only get planes that already had H included. Then if you want, you can also choose to sort. So for example, you could choose to sort these alphabetically, or numerically or alphabetically with case sensitive, etc. So I'll go ahead and sort these up alphabetically and I'll apply it to the variable I already had created. The second one I created was a string. So that was a text box one and these are pretty straightforward. Basically how they work is you just input a variable. So that one's pretty straightforward to say the least. Uh, you can just go ahead and Basically, there won't be a preview of a value here, though, because all you're going to do is it's going to be a write in box. So for me, what I did with that is a little bit different in the fact that because it's a write in box, it's a little uh, unique in how you use it and how you actually use it within your panels. Another one that you can certainly use that's very common is the data source option. But this one's just going to show you all of the data sources that you have. And then from there, you can have like an instance name filter. So for example, I could change um, instead of, so this allows you to basically have multiple data sources to pull from. So for example, maybe my InfluxDB, you know, uh, main flight versus flight demo had similar data sets, but one was for like a US data set and one was for like a UK data set. That's when you would use data source options. And then with this, you do want to name it something descriptive, especially if you're using something like just a straight text box. So I'm going to use the word ident, which is a write in variable for the flights. So I'll go back here. And so from here, I can pick something like, let's go ahead and see what flights we've got. All right, so these are my two panels. Let me go into this one first. So my uh, my code's a little complicated in the fact that I have a lot of uh, aircraft types. This isn't, for example, limiting it by anything like a time value. So for example, let's go ahead and try A320. So my aircraft type of A320 has commonly origin cities of Dallas, Las Vegas, Minneapolis, Los Angeles, etc. The important thing here is to come down here. So what we're doing here is we are selecting origin city from flight where time is between this value and specifically oh, for the aircraft type, we are putting it in like this. We've got this wonderful dollar sign and then aircraft type. So it does need to be the same value name here. So when we go to the ident one, you're going to see the same thing, but this aircraft type will help you. will basically just manipulate this value here to be whatever you select from the top. So for example, if I change it to an A20N, you'll see things like Burbank, Chicago, etc. But the list does change. You can see the list changing. And obviously, I don't have to go within there to see this change. I could stay out here and see it as well. So for example, I picked a flight that probably doesn't have any, uh, any more data right now, or rather, I've also limited myself. I know it's still the last 24 hours, but just in general, 
we'll try this one. Yeah, there we go. So now we have a different list because I've changed it at the top. Now the ident number, let me go ahead and zoom in on my map and grab a plane that I know we've got some data for. So let me go to the last five minutes. So an ident is going to be a write-in number like this. So I'll go ahead and enter this value right here. And this should work for my second panel, but I might need to go in here because I think I renamed it. Yeah, so instead of naming it string, I named it ident. So let me just go ahead and make that adjustment. All right, there we go. Now I've renamed it to ident. And as you can see, we've got our origin city and our destination city. And again, I'll go ahead and apply this. And now you'll see it down here now that I've added it up at the top and we can go ahead and change it. So we'll go ahead and pick this one right here. This is great for something like an ident, like what I'm using right now. There we go. So we can see the origin is Austin, the destination is Las Vegas. This is especially great for a value like this where it's not really drop down friendly. Like these are obviously constantly changing values. The flight numbers are the ident numbers are completely unique to each plane basically in the route that it's flying. So these are not the type of values that are going to be consistent. Even the aircraft type is kind of reaching the limits of what I would call friendly for this kind of, you know, variable drop down. For example, I could pick something like aircraft type large and then I might be able to limit it to like some of the A's, for example, for Airbus. Um, and same with that. I could say like A and B, so Airbus and Boeing's, and that would remove some of the smaller planes. But basically, this is how you use the variables. It's very straightforward. It's very great to be able to do something like this, like I said, where then you can have, obviously, I'm just using two very small panels for this, two very basic ones that I built specifically for the demo. But it's great in the fact that I could change all of these to be responsive to things like, you know, the ident numbers or the aircraft types, like the average altitude of the aircraft type, etc. But yeah, that would be how you use variables within uh, Grafana with Influx.